Warning, the following will contain spoilers for The Lock by Steve Alton. If you haven't seen that review, check the description for a link, or better yet, read the book for yourself. After this book, I think I can safely say that Alton is just trying new, weird things for the sake of doing it. Because this book... I mean, it isn't bad, and I actually kind of like a lot of it, but it's clearly an experimental piece. The book starts a few years after the end of The Lock. Scientist Zachary Wallace is married to childhood crush Brenda, and now they have a son named William. They both live on Loch Ness, surviving by running a failing hotel, when one day Zach gets a visit from a science team from Antarctica. Apparently there's been a highly classified discovery of ancient animals from inside a borehole. The team wants to launch an investigation into a freshwater lake two miles below the icy surface of the continent into Lake Vostok. Zack is invited as an expert in ancient animals, and for publicity and fundraising, since he famously killed the Loch Ness Monster. But what they discovered down there completely blew all their minds. Zack is back as the same highly skeptical scientist that he was in the first book, but this time he's in much deeper trouble. The thrills and close calls he faces in this book are way amped up from the first. He's accompanied by two others on his mission to Vostok, an apathetic submersible pilot named Ben who was kicked out of the Air Force, and the ambitious scientist Ming who's out to make a name for herself with the scientific discovery of the century. The team is kind of an odd fellow situation, but they'll need each other when they lose their support line to the surface and have to fend against unknown threats in a completely pitch black cave filled with apex predators that no human has ever faced before. The first half of the book is classic Alton. It's pretty good, actually, and he goes into enough detail about life in Antarctica, including the local jargon, that it's almost like he actually visited McMurdo Base to research this book. Zack is in a tight spot. Some shady people might have a way out for him, so he signs up with them and gets much more than he bargained for. It's kind of the same plot as Primal Waters, but with a much stranger twist. And this is where I'm going to put up a big spoiler warning. I'm going to reveal the big twist here and what that twist does to the plot. So if you don't want to get this book ruined for you, stop watching here. Or you can skip to here to go straight to the rating. When the three-man team arrives, they discover two things. The first is that the lake is inhabited by living fossils, including giant sea lions, prosauruses, and leviathan whales. The second thing they find is a crashed alien spaceship. Yes, really. This is where the experimental writing kicks in. Vostok is completely unlike anything else in Alton's Meg series or The Lock. We see things like aliens, UFOs, time travel, multiverse theory, quantum theory, and multinational shadow government conspiracies all wrapped up in a strangely cohesive story. The fact that it all flows as well as it does, despite the very confusing nature of the plot elements, is nothing short of admirable. But does it make for an entertaining story? While the ideas presented are fascinating and could make for a lively discussion, they're only loosely connected within the central narrative itself. And within that, there are several plot points that are gleamed at, but otherwise dismissed with a hand wave and a shrug. For example, Zack died several times in Lake Vostok, but time was reset after each death. When he finally escaped, we didn't actually see it, but it was suggested that he got out because of portals thanks to the spaceship he discovered. After that, we see scenes presented almost randomly, like flashes of insight of the future as Zack tries to combat a group called Majestic 12 and stop them from destroying the planet via an ill-described threat. Majestic 12 apparently controls the world and has ties with paramilitary groups, Big Oil, and other such profiteers. Zack tries to use his newfound knowledge of things like zero-point energy and his past life as an alien to fend them off. No, you didn't hear that wrong. But the group is very persistent. Like I said, the ideas are fascinating, but they're kind of presented in this overly large concept piece that thinks it's deep and complex for simply including the ideas in the first place. Critics of Neon Genesis Evangelion will know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, that's not to say that I don't like this book. I do, but it comes with an asterisk. On a storytelling level, we get very little development or growth. We get snippets with Zack struggling against Majestic 12, but they don't really reach fruition. On a technical level, this isn't much of a story at all. This is just Alton trying something different to see if the book will work. And it really doesn't. It's like watching a trailer for a movie, which shows you all the dramatic moments, but doesn't go into too much detail. It's probably more fun to talk about the concepts within the book than it is the book itself. 
Overall, the book is kind of meh. Zack gets pushed aside in his own story, while the weird concepts overshadow him. He's just a tool, rather than a character, so that Alton can try something new. I'd still recommend reading it just to experience it, but don't raise your standards too high. So, have you read the book? What did you think? If not, do you want to read it now? Whatever your thoughts, comment below and stay tuned for more.